What's up guys? Today we're going to be solving another coding interview question. Uh, today is going to be a Facebook coding interview question uh, according to CodeSignal. Uh, CodeSignal is linked in the description, just a website where you can do these problems. I'm in the interview practice section, you can find it there. Uh, this is asked by Palantir and Facebook apparently uh, according to CodeSignal. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's called Find Longest Subarray by Sum. So let's just get into it. Alright, so as usual, I don't really like to read the problem description because some of these sites make it sound more complicated than it is, so I'm just going to explain it here for you guys. Uh, we're just going to be solving a function called find longest subarray by sum, so our goal here is to solve this function. And basically this function is just going to take in an array of numbers, so the numbers could be like this, 1, 2, 3, 7, 5. Uh, these numbers aren't sorted or anything like that, there's no special properties, it's just an array of numbers. Uh, and we're going to get this value S, so a sum, like 12, for example. So we're going to have an array of numbers and a value, right? A sum. What we want to do with this function is take our array, take the sum. So a subarray is just part of an array. And we want to find the longest part of the array where all the values in that subarray add up to equal the sum that we're given, right? So we're given this value 12. So we want to find the longest subarray of this array we're given where all the values in the subarray are equal to 12. And in this case, it's going to be from here to here. So from the yellow arrow to the green arrow, uh, 2, 3, 7. Because 2 plus 3 plus 7 is going to be equal to 12. There's another subarray in here that equals 12, right? 7 and 5. 7 and 5, 7 plus 5 is 12. But that's shorter than 2, 3, and 7. So we're going to return the boundaries. So from element 2 to element 4, uh, we're just going to return those, you know, the boundaries of... Um, from the which starting position to ending position in the array is the longest subarray that equals the sum. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying here, right? An array of numbers, we're given a sum, we find the longest subarray, where the numbers add up in that subarray to get that sum. Let's look at the inputs a little bit more in depth though so that uh, I can make sure you guys know that, you know, what inputs we're dealing with here. So you can see here on the right, we have our function, find longest subarray sum. Uh, we're returning an int array and we have, we're taking in the sum and we're taking in the int array, right? Um, here are the constraints. It's pretty straightforward. The sum that we're getting, so this s variable we're going to, as a parameter, uh, this is going to be between 0 and 10 to the 9. So it could be, you know, really small number, really large number. Uh, it's just a sum no negatives though uh, and then the int array is going to be between one element and like 10,000 elements and then each element in that array is going to be between zero and like a thousand so pretty straightforward there's no negative numbers here and our array is going to have at least one element the output is going to be just an array of negative one if there's no subarray with the sum and uh, the output array is going to just be the boundaries of the longest subarray if we do find it so that's pretty much it um, yeah, let's look at some examples. Here's another example of some data we might get here. So we might get this array, this sum, and we want to find the longest subarray of this array that the elements add up to that sum, right? So in this case, it's going to be from the first element to the fifth element, right? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That subarray is going to add up. All those values add up to 15. Um, that's instead of, right, maybe we would have thought of, you know, here's here's another subarray that adds up to 15, right? 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Uh, so that's another valid subarray that where the, it sums up to 15, but it's not as long as this subarray here, right, where we have the, you know, from here to here is much longer. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements rather than, you know, here to here, right? Here's the same example padded with some zeros. So you can see that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 0, 0. Uh, we're looking for 15 still, so this is still all adds up. If we took this subarray from yellow to green, this still all adds up to equal 15. So when we pad zeros, we just expand it, right? Uh, longest subarray. I think we get it by now, right? The longest one is what we want. So yeah, let's let's think of some algorithms. How can we solve this with time efficiency? So the brute force of any problem is usually doing like all possibilities or generating all combinations or whatever, and that applies here. Um, basically, we're looking for the longest contiguous subarray. So in this case, we could actually just look at all contiguous subarrays. 
and then just pick the longest one so we'd have some variable for like max length and then just look at every contiguous subarray so it'd be like nested for loops where one for loop is the outer one that just goes through one by one and then the inner one goes through the whole array for each time the outer one moves by one so this could just look at all contiguous subarrays so it could just look at you know it looks at every element in the array each time we iterate and uh, whenever we find uh, it would expand and whenever we find the sum adds all the elements add up to that sum that we're looking for we would just look oh is this length longer than the max length all right let's update our uh, result and then you just keep going you keep going you keep updating your result uh, you go you look at all of them then you move to the next one you look at all of them then you move to the next one you know basic n squared solution basic brute force solution and this is you know too slow right if you do this in an interview it is good to do this brute force in an interview just so your interviewer knows that you are capable of solving the problem at least but they're going to be like okay how can we improve this right and we have to figure out a way to improve this to linear time right this is n squared because we're looping through every element of the array for each element of the array uh, we only want to loop through this array, you know, once with the, both of these pointers. We don't want to have this yellow arrow keep going back. The right boundary shouldn't be going back at all. So let's think about how we can do that. So the approach is going to end up being like we have these two pointers as variables and we're looping along with the right pointer. And once we find, you know, the sum... We don't want to, you know, we want to update our answer, but we don't want to, you know, loop through the rest of this and go back. We want to kind of keep going. We kind of want to just move in. If it's going to be one loop through, right, if we want this to be linear, we want to keep going and we want to move this along before this gets to the end, right? We don't want this to be going back at all. So to do that, once we get to the sum, what we can do is, if we go over the sum, we can start subtracting elements from the beginning of the array. So we can kind of move it along, and this is called a sliding window approach. So it might be helpful to walk through a full example here too, just so you can visualize a little bit better. Um, so we'll start out, both pointers are at the beginning. We'll have a left and right pointer, and uh, we're looking for the sum 15, right? So we'll start out and we'll just add one to our current sum for the first position. All right, so now we'll move our right pointer along and we'll add two to the current sum and adjust our right pointer. All right, now we'll add uh, three to the current sum, adjust the right pointer. Add four to the current sum and adjust the right pointer. Add five to the current sum and adjust the right pointer. All right, so as we do this, we're going to have a condition to see, oh, is the current sum 15? If it is, that means we found a sub, right? This is a subarray that adds up. The sum of it is 15. So now once we find that, we can adjust our output with these boundaries, with plus one, of course. So left will be plus one and right will be plus one. All right, so now we'll uh, move over and add zero to the current sum. And that's going to be the same sum, just a new right boundary. So that's going to extend the right boundary in our output as well as right here. Same thing, just basically extending these boundaries. We're finding a new longest one each time we add another zero, right? So padding zeros is just going to give us a longer, longer subarray. And then the last zero. All right, so now we're going to add, move over to the six. So we're going to add six to the current sum. All right, so the current sum is 21 now, which is greater than the sum we're looking for. So instead of going back and calculating all of these new subarrays, what we're going to do is we're just going to move our window, right? This will make it linear. This is what's the good part about the algorithm. This is why sliding window approaches are awesome. So we just move it here. And since this is no longer part of the window, the window is the subarray. And this is the elements we're using. So since we're not using this one anymore, we're going to subtract this from the current sum and adjust our left boundary. So since the sum is still over what we're looking for, we're going to move the boundary over again and subtract that too. Once again, the sum is still over what we're looking for. So we're going to move over again and we're going to subtract that three because we're no longer using it. All right, so we found the sum again. So this subarray right here actually has that sum that we're looking for. So are we going to update our answer? No, we're not because this subarray isn't as long as the one that we had. And we can just check that by doing 8 minus 3 is 5 compared to 8 minus 1, which is 7. So we already saw a subarray of length 7 compared to the one we're looking at right now, which is 5. So this is weak. We're just going to keep moving along and looking for another subarray that's better. So we have that 7. Now the sum's over. So we got to pop some from the front. So we pop that 4 off on the left side. And then we're still over 15. So we would pop off the 5 on the left side as well. 
And then yeah, our window would look like this right now. We're under, so we'd move over. And you could see like the whole pattern of this basically. I hope I've made it clear by now. I've, I mean, it's a huge example. Um, the, both of these pointers are gradually moving over until it gets to the very end of the array on both of these pointers, right? Eventually it will. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You're going throughout this. These are only, these two variables are pointers. They're only going to loop through it once. And uh, by the time you get to the end, you will have found the longest uh, contiguous subarray with, with that sum, which is exactly our goal here. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing. The, that's what sliding windows are awesome. There's a ton more of these problems we can go over eventually. And uh, yeah, let's look at it in code so we can, you know, solidify our understanding just a little bit better. All right, so let's look at the code here. Here's our function. We take in this uh, integer s, we take in the array. We initialize, this is just going to be our output, so we just put a negative 1 in there in case we don't find any subarray. So this will get returned at the end no matter what. And as we modify it, hopefully we find that longest contiguous subarray. We just have a sum for our subarray as we go. Uh, we have a left and right pointers, remember those arrows. And while right, right is going to be the one that gets to the end first. So while right is less than array.length, um, we're going to just add those elements to the sum. And if the sum goes over, so if the sum ever goes over, we'll start knocking elements off the front. So we move our window over. So our right expands. It's, the elements are getting added to the sum, right? So, and then once the sum goes over, we start popping off the left side. We start, so left plus plus is going to move our left pointer over. And at the same time, we're also doing sum minus equals uh, that element. So we're moving that element from the sum and we're popping it off. So just moving our window over. This is the moving our window over logic when the sum goes over. And then here, all we do is if we find the um, the, t the sum of the current uh, contiguous subarray is equal to S, that sum we're looking for. So the sum's equal. And, you know, we only have one element in our output so far, meaning we haven't even updated our output yet. So we found the sum, we, we then we'll update our result, right, immediately. Otherwise, we'll just check, is the length, is the right minus left, so are the boundaries of the current subarray we're looking at greater than whatever is already in our result? So the boundaries that are already in our result. So if we found a new maximum length, then we also update it. So we update it if there's nothing in it and we find the sum, or we update it if we found a greater length and we match the sum. Uh, otherwise, we're just moving the right. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's actually pretty straightforward. Hopefully, this makes sense to you guys. People do not believe that the code works in some of my videos. So from now on, I'm just always going to run the test on it. It does work. This is a linear solution once again compared to the brute force, which is an O of n squared solution. So this is a sliding window. Please look into sliding windows and get more familiar with them. I really love sliding window problems. Um, they're really awesome to do, and I have a fun time doing them. So um, this is, uh, this once again, this was a Facebook coding interview question. Please like and subscribe because it helps me grow the channel. I got a uh, Patreon in the description and a Discord if you want to join that. Got study guide on my Patreon. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, that's pretty much it. That was Facebook coding interview question. Hopefully you guys, if you get this, if you're interviewing on Facebook, hopefully you get this and you're like, yo, sliding window, I got this. I saw this video, boom. And then your interviewer is going to be like, wow, that was good. And then you pass and then you get hired and then you send me a thank you note on Instagram or something. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, that's that's it. Uh, see you in the next video. Peace.